Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's me coming at you again with another vid. This time, this is a post-fight vid review between Sergey the Crusher Kovalev and Jean Pascal. Now, this is a senseless rematch that, in other words, no one wanted to see. <laughs> okay, and it, it and it ended in the result that I predicted. It was going to end in a Kovalev knockout or stoppage, whatever the case may be. But the fact is this: uh, first round. First round, uh, Kovalev hit Pascal with a stiff left jab, and he went down, which is a very, very shocking to me. Obviously, it's not too shocking, but I'll get into that later in the video, all right? But Pascal had some bit of success in that round where he threw a couple body shots and, uh, you know, threw a couple combinations to the face, whatnot, or actually one, com you know, one shot, one while swinging uh, left hook to the face. Didn't really uh, affect Kovalev at all, but that's the end of the first round there. Uh, second round, a little bit back and forth. Of course, both men were very, very active in that round. Uh, still had to give the edge to Kovalev because obviously he was throwing more effective punches, uh, more combinations, and you know he was pressing the action. Obviously, he was putting pressure on Col on Pascal, especially keeping him at bay with the uh, jabs and hooks, whatnot. So. Uh, then we go into the third round, same scenario, um, Kovalev pressing the action. A little bit of activity from Pascal as well, but obviously Pascal was a guy who's waiting for Kovalev to come in and make a mistake so he could throw some of those wide hooks so he can catch them. He did actually clip uh, Kovalev with the right, but it didn't really have much muster because uh, obviously he was throwing those punches wildly and he didn't really commit to that punch. Um, so the fourth round, this is where things really start to turn um, – Turn into tide here, where uh, Kovalev had hit Pascal with a monstrous straight right cross to the face, and that really stung Pascal. And then after that, he followed up with the body, left hook to the body, and Pascal didn't recover from there, obviously. And I'm not saying he was really in the fight, but he did have some bit of uh, he did show some activity in the first two rounds, and he started to really slip away in the third, and especially in the fourth round, where he ate that right cross to the face and that and took that left hook to the body. So uh, from there, Kovalev started to dominate, and he really trapped Pascal in the corner with many occasions and barraged him with shots and punished him in the corner. But for some reason, he let him out in the corner. And I'll get to that in, um, later in this video. But um, he, he continued to pressure. He continued his punch output going into the sixth round. No changes there from Pascal. No activity whatsoever. Seventh round, same scenario. I mean, Kovalev was still trapping Pascal in the corner, punishing him, letting him out. Uh, again, Pascal just didn't just didn't have it at all. So after the seventh round, Freddie Roach decided to throw in the towel and decided that his fighter did, couldn't take no more to let him go back out there. So uh, as I say once again, senseless stoppage. <laughs> uh, I mean, not senseless stoppage. I'm sorry. Uh, senseless rematch. It was never warranted to begin with. Okay. Now, if you ask me during the fight, and the reason why, uh, before I get into that, now, if you ask me uh, where does two fighters go from here at this point, you know, obviously Kovalev's going, you know, he's got Andre Ward coming up in this fall, but he's, you know, he's certainly got options on making voluntary defenses, whatnot. Um, but I'll get to that in a sec. But first things first, I got to say John Pascal. Um, if you ask me, I think he's a totally shot fighter from here. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at the uh, first Kovalev fight, which he actually did much better in that fight, performed better in that fight than he did in this fight. He took a hellacious beating in that fight. Okay. In the second fight, he didn't look great at all. He took some monstrous shots against Yuniski Gonzalez, who I felt got robbed on the guards. Of course, in the third fight, given the fact that he went down from a jab, in the first round, even though that was not ruled a knockdown. I mean, it should have been a knockdown, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, given that how he performed in, in his last three fights, I just don't really see that he has has what it takes anymore, to be honest with you. Uh, he did say that he's going to be back, you know, in, his, in the post-fight interview. He said he's going to come back. But to me, his days as a, as a top contender is pretty much done right now, unless he could find a way to regain his form. You know, from his days when he fought Carl Froch, when he fought Chad Dawson and um, Bernard Hawkins, whatnot. But I don't see that happening. Now, as far as Sergey Kovalev is concerned, Mass Call of them did ask him in the, in the middle of the interview, of the post fight interview, it was like, did you intentionally trap Pascal in several, on some occasions in that fight? You punished him 
you potentially trapped him in the corner and punched him and you let him out. Did you do that so that way you wanted to inflict more punishment on him? And Sergey like, said, well, yeah, 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 I, I did because I, I don't respect him. Yeah, I don't respect him. I don't like him at all. And what Sir Kovalev was referring to is that Pascal was barraging him, was disparaging him um, with, you know, racial, racist, racism accusations and, you know, saying some meaningful things to their trainer, John David Jackson, pretty much calling him a coon for training uh, Kovalev. Now, let's not get it twisted here because I am very aware of Sergey Kovalev's um, uh, incident, um, incidents where he had, uh, had, for example, as I stated in my pre-fight video, where he had allegedly, I think this really happened, in a fight when he had with Ishmael Ishikla for the WBO title, he knocked out uh, Shikla in the second round. But when Shikla went down, he yelled at Shikla and said, you're not a real Russian, you're not a real Russian. Now, mind you, Shikla is from Ukraine, okay? Second of all, he does have African ancestry. So what does that tell you? <laughs> and another thing, um, his son was caught, you know, he had his son wear a monkey shirt t-shirt portraying Donna Stevenson, all right? And he tweeted that. Of course, that caused a lot of upper controversy, and he deleted that tweet and apologized for it. But to me, I think that's way out of line. Did he do that just to intentionally get a Stevenson said? Perhaps, but I think that's a low ball, and that's definitely not the way to go, and I don't condone that shit at all, okay? Now, if you want to get to a fighter said, cool, but that's not the way you do it, all right? Be inflicting something that's very racial, uh, ra racially divi um, divisive for so many years, Okay? Or discriminating, I should say. But anyhow, he did mention that before the Andre Ward fight. You know, he does have Andre Ward coming up this fall. Uh, Mask call him, ask him, who do you want to fight next? He said, well, I want I want the unified. I want to fight Adonis Chickenson. <laughs> Not Stevenson, Chickenson. And then he um, uh, made the chicken gesture. Boop, 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 boop. That's exactly what he did. And that prompts Stevenson to get in the ring and get upset and want to go after Kovalev. And he had, you know, the entourage had to hold Stevenson back and say, hey, I'm the real champion. I'm the real champion, you clown. Come here, I'm the real champion. Blah, blah, blah. Now, Donna Stevenson, I mean, obviously his career career is so stale at this point because ever since he captured that linear in WBC title from Tab Dawson, he had a couple good fights. One against Tony Bellew, which he pretty much won, you know, in the lopsided way. He knocked him out. Two, he beat Torforis Cloud. Actually, he had three good fights. He beat Torforis Cloud, a former champion. Okay, that was a good win. Three, he had a very, very tough fight, in which a lot of people assumed that was a cherry pick fight against Andrew Fafar. When Fafar actually knocked down Stevenson, who's actually one of the only two guys to do it, uh, Fafar gave him a very tough fight and whatnot. And since then, he's been having you know lackluster defenses against guys like Tom, Tommy Carpatian, uh, Saki Obika. I mean, Obika was a t was a, is a tough cookie, but obviously he wasn't really in the fight because he's not a true one, true one seventy five pound guy. You know, he moved up from 168, and then some other guy, I forgot his name, whoever it is, I don't know. But needless to say, uh, I wouldn't count on a Kovalev Stevenson fight happening anytime soon, all right? I wouldn't bet on that. However, I would like to see Kovalev fight um, Arthur Perturbiev. Now, that's a fight I want to see, and I think Perturbiev has Kovalev's number because from what I've read and heard, Kovalev has been very dismissive of Perturbiev. For the last two years. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. I think from what I've read is that Paterbia is, is injured at the moment. So, obviously, the, the chances of that fight happening anytime soon is is pretty, very, very slim at this point. But I really would love to see that fight. And if you ask me, I think Paterbia will run through Kovalev. And Kovalev, I think when he's asked about it, he's very, very dismissive. And he doesn't really want to talk about um, Paterbia. But who knows? Where we go from there? Oh, before I close out this video, I have to say one thing. I realized that my um, debate opponent for the uh, who's greater, the topic on who's greater between Vendor Holyfield and uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, that's internal boxing guys. I have to say that was a great debate. Uh, much respect, much props to him, or respect to him, I should say. He's a good debater, whatnot, and we definitely needed that in the YTBC. But he put out a video trying to debunk one of my claims about Floyd Mayweather, Duck, and Vivian Harris. All right, and let me respond to that real quickly. <laughs> first thing first. When Vivian Harris captured the WBA title against uh, Desali Zertado, uh, the same guy who got knocked out by Costa Zoo, um, he had three other defenses. Uh, one, I think one voluntary defense and two against uh, 
uh, Yurkai, Yurtal, I mean, Yurtai Yurkal, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but his last name is Yurkal. He's the same guy that fought Miguel Cotto to a distance, all right, years ago. Floyd was named the WBA uh, mandatory challenger to Harris's title, and Harris was vehemently called out Floyd. He vehemently called him out um, during that process, and of course, Floyd is being dismissive, as, he's, as he always is, when it comes to some approaching certain fights and certain fighters, and and Harris took that as a bit of disrespect. So what he did during the press conference of the Gotti and uh, Mayweather fight, you know, the pre, the you know, the lead up to the fight press conference, uh, Harris took it upon himself to to um, inter- to abrupt that press conference and go up to that podium and call out Floyd right in front of everyone in front of the national audience. So. I know you was being clever by putting up that video where Harris was get got knocked out by Carlos Maza, and that was on the undercard of of uh, Gotti and uh, Mayweather. So, <laughs> but I thought I'd just let that out and give you a little back uh, backstory behind that. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you think John Pascal is shot right now? Do you think he has any more fights left in him, or do, uh, where do you see Ker- Sergey Kovalev going at this point before the Andre Ward fight? Uh, who do you think he should fight? Should he should fight Arthur Berteriev, even though he's injured right now? I think he should fight him. I think he could fight him before an Andre Ward fight come about. Or Andrew from far. I think that would be a good fight. I would love to see that fight. Well, anyhow, let me know what you think. Care, comment, share, subscribe. Sign it off. Peace.